With the rise of social media, I know a lot of us have been seeing a lot more animal rescues pop up. And it's a lot easier to get started nowadays than ever because you don't have to create a following and a local presence in order to be funded because of social media allows us to access the world. How much do people on social media know about what it means to actually be an animal rescue? Specifically, horse rescue. So today I wanted to start a series about um, kind of a little bit more information about what an animal rescue is. Specifically a horse rescue, because I don't actually know about other animal rescues. <laughs> um, so talk about what you know. Um, so what does it mean to be a horse rescue? And this will be a three-part series. I'll post on a couple videos and over the next couple weeks. But, but today first I wanted to talk about what is a rescue? You know, how do you know what a reputable rescue is? And what's the different kinds of rescues? Again, talking about horse rescues, because I don't, I don't know much of anything else. And then over the next couple of weeks, uh, I'm going to talk about how much does it cost to run a horse rescue? And again, that's the way we do it. How much does it cost to run a horse rescue? And also, how much time does it take to run one? So first, what is a horse rescue? So you'll see a lot of talk about being a 501c3 nonprofit. And what that actually means is you are federally approved to raise money for charitable means, meaning you are not planning on making any money off of this. You're not planning on doing it for profit. You can do it to make a living, um, but you're not, your main goal in running this organization is not going to be for profit. That's what it means to be a not-for-profit. So what a lot of people don't know is in order to be a nonprofit, you're actually supposed to have 30% of your income is supposed to be raised through charitable contributions from um, public supporters. So you can't just be a nonprofit and fund your whole thing. That's not how it works. It has you're a public charity. <laughs> She's trying to get me to scratch her belly. You're supposed to be a public charity. So that means you know it's on you to raise money, and it's supposed to show that you know the public supports the work you're doing. So that is, at minimum, 30% of your income should come from charitable donations. Now, different nonprofits run differently. Some people, some nonprofits have a lot of grant support. Um, some nonprofits have a lot of old-time big donors. And some, like us, are mostly just, you know, brick and mortar, everyday small donations from a lot of people. And that's the kind that social media really helps support because you can reach so many more people now all around the world than you ever could before. Okay, so that's, a no that's what a nonprofit is. And a nonprofit's a really good way to show that an organization has done its due diligence in showing that they are not existing for profit. So say I'm raising money, they're not skimming off the top, right? It's also a federal nonprofit are the ones that are tax deductible. So if you donate to them, you can uh, write a portion of that off your on your taxes. So that's kind of what it means to be a nonprofit. One cool, there's a bug on my lip. Um, one cool benefit of being a nonprofit is that all of your finances have to be public. So you can actually go onto the IRS webpage and search and find all the tax documents for any nonprofit, any public charity uh, that you want. So you can make sure that you support how this rescue works and how this rescue uses their money. You might be like, oh, I didn't know that you spent 30% of your income on paying people. And again, that's not a problem, but just to know where your donation goes. So, oh, I didn't know you spent, you know, some of your money on land lease or, you know, upgrades. So when you donate, always be sure to go to that IRS webpage and see what, what kind of money these nonprofits are pulling in and what they're using the money for. And I'll, I'll put that link down below. So horse rescues tend to get their horses from about four different types of sources. And some rescues do just maybe one. Some rescues may be taken from all four sources. Some rescues, like us, would only take in three out of four. Every rescue operates differently. And that's great, right? The things that we are strong in, you know, another rescue may not be strong in or our program might be weak in a specific area, whereas another rescue could be really strong in that area. So it's awesome that they're all, well, we're all different because then we can all work together. But you can also look and make sure that you're supporting an organization that aligns with your values. So a rescue typically gets its horses from one to four of four different sources. And those four different sources are 
uh, kill pens, auctions, which are typically low-end livestock auctions, but some recipes go to different auctions, um, owner of surrenders, and law enforcement cases. So kill pens are run by kill buyers, and they're typically the ones that go to these livestock auctions, and they pick up all the horses, they used to pick up all the horses that nobody else was bidding on, you know, so they picked up the cheapest they could get. These horses were sold by the pound as the kill buyers were their main purchaser. Um, with the advent of social media and more and more rescues and private individuals bailing these horses, so that means that the horse was bought from the auction, put onto a kill pen or a feedlot, and then it was offered for ransom saying, you know, come buy this horse by Sunday or it ships to Mexico for slaughter. So with the rise of social media, this method has gained traction, and now the kill buyers are able to bid more and more up at auctions. So one of the places that uh, rescues get horses are from buying those kill pen horses, and they raise money, and so they'll purchase the horse out of the kill pen. That is not the way, that's not one of the ways that we do it, um, but many rescues do. And then... Buying at the auction is another way, so that would mean that you would go down there, you'd go to the auction, you would bid against the kill buyer, or bid on a horse that you feel needs to come into your rescue. So that's the second way that rescues tend to get horses. Um, the third way we're going to talk about is owner surrenders. So this means that you know, someone in your area, or maybe not even in your area, reached out and they said, hey, I'm in a tough spot, I've got a horse that needs a place to go. And so you take in their horse, and that would be an owner surrender. And the fourth way is law enforcement seizures. So that would be working with whatever your law enforcement is in your area, that if horses get seized by law enforcement for neglect or abuse, and then you could take custody of them as a rescue, rehabilitate them, and adopt them out, whatever your program is. A lot of different ways that horse rescues run. For example, um, some rescues will you know, euthanize more horses in order to be able to save more and have more space. Um, some horses, some rescues will spend a lot more on vet bills before they do that. There's different organizations, there's different like coalitions where you can look at that will kind of group together rescues with that same mentality. Um, so a couple examples of these are the Full Circle of Life program done by Horse Plus Humanity. That's what it's run by, the rescue that it's run by. Um, so that's kind of one coalition of organizations. Another one is the Right Horse Initiative, uh, run by the ASPCA. And so all the rescues who belong to these groups kind of have similar values. So I'm sure I forgot something. Please let me know in the comments if you have any questions or let me know what I forgot. Um, and yeah, so this is just a broad overview. There's ins and outs that, you know, I missed, I'm sure. <laughs> But, you know, let us know your thoughts down below, and, you know, thank you for following, and we're going to keep kind of going along about what it means to actually be a horse rescue, how much it costs, and how much time it takes, and I hope this helped uh, you kind of know a little bit more about what you're supporting, and yeah.